So my day so far is an actual mess and it's only like 1 p.m. So, you know, I just want to say that if this video ends up being a mess as well, I'm very sorry. But, you know, gotta film. So there is that. Um, yeah, so this mess of the year is finally coming to an end. Um, as is this month. Obviously, I read some books. I want to talk to you about them. So here we go. So, in case you weren't aware, December was the Harry Xmas to You month. Um, I actually made a video for the Harry Xmas to You channel. I will link that down below. So, I wanted to read some Harry Potter related things. So, I kind of started off with a reread of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This is one of my favorites in the series, actually. I feel like everyone knows what this is about, but, you know, if you don't, and you somehow don't know what Harry Potter is and blah, 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 uh, I don't want to spoil it for you. It's it's just, it's great. It's amazing. I, I loved reading it. Um, I become more aware of some things that I didn't notice before, but it's still, you know, it's still Harry Potter. It's still the love of my life. I love it so much. It was so, so good. And then I somehow decided to read uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child because my sister got it from the library. I got it from my sister. Um, man, it, this is supposed to be the eighth Harry Potter book. Quotes, I refuse to acknowledge that. It reads like terribly written fanfiction. It's set 19 years from the end of Harry Potter, so like after the epilogue and it follows Albus Severus Potter and whatnot. Um, I don't want to get too much into it because it just makes me so bitter, even more bitter than my already very bitter self. How many times can I say bitter in one sentence? Mm, that's what this book does to me. It's in play format because it's actually a play. So they only made it in print to be more accessible to those unable to get to London to see the play or, you know, because people wanted to make money. Um, I'm very bitter, I warn you. I don't want to get more into it. I just did not enjoy it. It read like a bad fan fiction. I actually talked a bit more in depth about my feels toward this in a video that I will link down below in case you care enough to watch. Yeah. Not not a good time, not my favorite. I then wanted to go against myself and everything I believe in and read some Christmassy books, because that's a thing. I hate Christmas, if you didn't know, so I was trying very hard to get into the spirit. One of the books I read was Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Kahn and David Levithan. Uh, this follows Dash and Lily, obviously, and sort of this notebook that goes between the two uh, and they like write dares for each other in it and it's very much fun. It's not what I expected the book to be. I, I don't know what I was expecting it to be, but this wasn't it. But I really, really enjoyed it. The characters are so different, so you can definitely tell that there are very distinct voices of the writers uh, behind each of them. But they are just so nice, each in their own way. And I really enjoyed the story. It was very fun. It wasn't anything life-changing, but it was very fun and at times it just got real deep. And I love it when my books get real deep. So that was, you know, solid, solid right there. I was a fan. It, I definitely recommend you pick this up if you want something fluffy and light and Christmassy. So, yeah. I again wanted something more Christmassy. I had no idea about anything about these books but I saw them in a charity shop and they were hella cheap and they looked nice and I was like you know what I should get them because I don't know and they are Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe and Christmas at Rosie Hopkins's Sweet Shop by Jenny Colgan. I hope that's how you pronounce her name. These both are actual, actually sequels, which I didn't know, 
But thankfully, uh, there's a foreword that tells you that, you know, you don't have to read the first books. And it just sort of gives you a rundown of what happened in them. So that was a very nice addition because I didn't know that the, these were sequels. So, you know, uh, this is set in London at a cupcake cafe and we also see sequences from New York and it's Christmas time and this almost filled me with that Christmassy feel and magic almost being the keyword. It was as close as it can get. It was very nice and fluffy again super cutesy nothing life-changing but definitely a nice read. And this one was set at a sweet shop that Rosie takes from her great aunt or something. It's set in a tiny village, which kind of reminded me of Stars Hollow from Gilmore Girls because of the atmosphere. It was really nice and yeah, not the writing was better than in the other one, but I somehow, I don't know, I liked the other story better. So yeah, that was that, but still, you know, really cute, really fluffy, super light. Then I was contacted by a publisher to check out a Netgelly arc of Frostblood by Ellie Blake, and it was so much fun. It's a fantasy novel set in this world that has frost bloods, which are people that can control, you know, frost, ice, blah, blah, blah and Firebloods, which are people that can control fire. And our protagonist, Ruby, is a Fireblood in a nation of Frostbloods. And shit goes down real quick for her from the beginning of the book. And she sort of has to get in control of her powers after she's been suppressing them her whole life. And she goes in this weird quest to like save the kingdom killed the king, I don't know. It's really, really a lot of fun. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did because it doesn't really sound like something that I would normally pick up these days, but it was right up my alley. It was so good. I Things were happening very fast for my liking, but I really, really liked Ruby and there was some romance, which was not bad and it was just super interesting the world is like nothing i've really seen before uh yeah it was incredible and the book comes out on january 10th according to goodreads so i hope that's accurate man i should have done my research before filming this i'm very sorry speaking of arcs um i requested an arc from the publisher and i got approved and i got sent it and it's like my most highly anticipated read of next year and i was so happy and it, it's history is all you left me by adam silvera oh my god man this book follows griffin um when he has to attend the funeral of his ex-boyfriend love of his life best friend and sort of dealing with uh, the boyfriend's current boyfriend and coming to terms with his death and it, it's so sad. Uh, also, Griffin suffers from OCD and the portrayal of mental illness in this book is so raw and it's beautiful, man! The whole book is so sad and it's so focused on grief and the way people deal with it in different ways. It's about growing up and growing apart and it's about people and it's just so beautiful. I cannot even tell you. It's so wittily written and there are so many pop culture references. I, I cheer at every Harry Potter reference because I'm just so happy and it's so nerdy and so cute. Uh, also, it is considered own voices because Adam Silvera himself is uh queer and he suffers from ocd so you know i just oh my god this book is just everything it's ruining me i literally wanted to cry myself to sleep in my pillow last night that's how painful it is but it's so beautiful and just the way that it can make you feel this sad i think it's like the ultimate achievement in adam silvera is a genius and i want him to be my best friend and know 
I'm only like halfway through this, granted, but it's so good. It's so good. Honestly, it's one of the best books I've ever read and like it's blue. Honestly, how on brand is that? I'm just so emotional. Uh, I'm pretty sure this comes out in January in the US and on February 9th in the UK. Might be wrong, but that's what I know. It's just so good. You definitely have to check it out when it comes out. It's amazing. So yeah, that's what I read this month, basically. Um, I just, I'm so happy that 2016 is going to be over. You have no idea. Please do share what your favorite read of the month was or your favorite read of the year since it's all wrapping it up. Also do let me know if you read any of these books. Um, yeah, I will catch you guys later. Thank you for watching. Bye.